Will he be the first full-bred homegrown Filipino in the NBA? Fresh off his stint in Australia, we check in with Kai Soto, his trainer Jeremiah Boswell, agent Joel Bell, manager Patty Scott, and their preparations for the upcoming NBA draft. My name is Gretchen Ho, and with me today is my partner, veteran broadcaster Kinito Hanson. A good morning to all of you from Manila. Good morning, Kinito. Good morning, Gretchen, and good, good morning. morning to all the guys here. We're so excited to talk to Kai Soto, and of course, the team that's behind him, the team that's behind trying to put him in the NBA. Shot clock winding down. Soto from the elbow. It's good. Again, skilled. Big good morning, man. Kai. Good morning. Good evening, Hello. Pala. What time is it there? Good evening, Dito. Yeah, good morning there. <laughs> Thanks for having us. Good evening to uh, Jeremiah, Joel. Good evening. Thanks for having us. Looking, Looking forward to the conversation. The light, huh? <laughs> and I mean, Patty, I, we want to say hi to Patty too. Of course, of course, of course. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's start off with a very Filipino question, Kinito. Uh, Kai, kamusta ka? Kamusta? How, how is your schedule there? How's your life there? Uh, how's your training? 12 apiece. Do or die game for these teams here. And here it is! Kai, reach for the sky! Soto! Uh, everything's uh, going uh, well. Uh, first couple of days, it was a bit a uh, struggle, uh, a bit jet lag, but uh, you know, my team around me uh, helped me. Jeremiah, uh, great, great guy, great uh, trainer, uh, helped me uh, this past uh, two weeks uh, training. And uh, I think I'm very happy with uh, what we've done so far. And uh, I'm looking forward to what we're going to do in the next uh, couple of weeks. At your age, with your Filipino heritage, how does it feel to be now so close to being picked in the NBA draft? It's, it's exciting because uh, it's going to be the it's going to be first. I think it's the first time that uh, full-grown Filipino has uh, has been this close. But uh, I'm, I'm still. Just focused on uh, working hard every single day to improve and uh, to get better and uh, to be ready when, uh, when the draft comes. And uh, I'm just uh, excited and nervous at the same time, but uh, yeah, I can't wait. I know that the invitations from NBA teams are coming up. So how are you working yourself to be at peak form so when you report for action, you're ready to go? And also a question about your trainer, Jeremiah Boswell. What has he helped you in preparing for these NBA camps? I usually train uh, twice a day and uh, I lift three times a week and uh, you know work out in the morning with Jeremiah and then uh, usually I have a shooting uh, workout with uh, Coach Corey and uh, that's uh, six times uh, a week and uh, yeah just working uh, working out every day with, with uh, my trainers and uh, I think I think I'm, I'm doing uh, pretty good and uh, they've been pushing me uh, these past uh, weeks. So, uh, yeah, it's been great. What is it with Jeremiah's program that led you to come to his door? Uh, Jer Jeremiah, I've known Jeremiah since my TSF days. Uh, I had a couple of workouts with him. Uh, I'll probably say Jeremiah has been uh, my toughest trainer. He's given me the toughest workouts. That's why I chose to to come and train with him because I know that I will be very uh, challenged when uh, when I work out with him, and uh, I think that will really prepare me to this uh, upcoming uh, uh, NBA team workout. So uh, it's almost a no-brainer to choose uh, Jeremiah, and uh, I trust him a lot. And uh, it's also in Atlanta where I played before, so it's, uh, it's been uh, yeah, it's, it's been good. Kind of understand. Um, the intensity in which it's important to get to. And so I, I lean into that with the training that, that we do. But I, I promise I am a nice guy um, and, <laughs> and just try to push as hard as we can on the court um, because we got to get there. So 
Um, Kai has goals and, and we all have goals. And so we've got to push uh, through this window. Kai wasn't invited to the NBA draft combine. 76 players were invited. Only 58 will be drafted. Over 200 players have applied for the draft, including a Philam, Ron Harper Jr. Now, were you previously advised that Kai wouldn't be invited to the combine? And will that somehow affect his chances of being drafted? Joel. In regard to the NBA combine, I was not surprised he wasn't invited. Uh, all NBA teams are not equal. It's not an accident. Some teams are always near the top, Miami, for example, and some teams are always near the bottom. I won't mention names. This is not an accident. This is a result of their scouting, their organization, how they do things. Teams that scouted Australia this year, which surprisingly, given the history of Australia sending players to the NBA, is not as extensive as one might imagine. We're very enthusiastic about Kai. That's why we have so many teams that want to bring him in for individual workouts. And we actually already have commitments from at least one team that said, if he stays in the draft, we'll draft him. We have that already. Mm -hmm. We're not sure that's the right place for him. And that's going to be a decision Kai and his family and his advisors make at the right time. Why did you decide to have him enter the NBA draft this year? I mean, honestly, Gretchen, Kai has a team behind him, but he it's his boys. Kai okay. wanted to enter the draft. This is Kai's dream. This is his journey. We're just here supporting mm -hmm. um, what he wants to do and there to advise. So, um, you know, we've been so happy about the progress that Kai's made since he came to the States from, you know, graduating to playing at TSF. I mean, all the, the national team competitions, as Joel said, each year he's progressed and he did an incredible job an incredible job in Australia. So this was Kai's decision and we're supporting that decision. As a seven footer, what do you think would be his edge? And, and how many have you seen um, the other seven footers in the NBA draft? With that size and length, his IQ and ability to just play the game uh, with his mind, to see the floor, to pass the ball, to shoot the ball, he can really do everything. So. Um, he's pretty unique in that. Now, I think there are things that he can always improve on, right? And you see this a lot in the NBA. There's a lot of small ball. There's a lot of switching on pick and rolls. Um, and so, like, you know, how is how does he move laterally? Can he switch onto guards? How does he play the pick and roll? Um, can he hedge and get back? And so, those are some things that we've been working on um, and and improving uh, just his his conditioning and and his shooting. Because in any pre draft workout that you go to with any team, you got to be able to shoot the ball and you got to be in great shape. So, mm -hmm. those are kind of the 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 base items that you have to to capture. And then, you know, he's gotten better. He's gotten tougher. He's moving better defensively. And I think. Um, more importantly, even than his lateral movement is, I think now he understands how long he is. Like before, when I saw him at TSF, he was so tall, so long, but he didn't realize the impact he could have by just putting his hand up or how he changed shots or block shots. And I think he's realized that. Um, and again, that's just a part of his, his process. So he's, he's getting better. Um, and I think those things are gonna, as, as Joel mentioned, like he's gonna dazzle some people. He looks like an NBA player. What have you learned in your stint in the NBL with Adelaide? And how has that uh, made you tougher as a basketball player and mature? Uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, the team, organization, Adelaide 36 that I believe they really helped me uh, develop and uh, improve as a player and as a person. And uh, living in Australia uh, at first wasn't easy, but uh, I just saw how they welcomed me as a as a as a teammate, as a as a player, and uh, and uh, I'm just I'm just very happy, and uh, I think I, I really learned a lot since day one till the end of the season. Uh, I got uh, I adjusted to the physicality, to the to the way of uh, playing, and uh, just. Also taking care of my body, I really learned uh, much, and um, just I just pretty much uh, enjoyed my uh, experience and uh, those memories that I had in Australia will be uh, will be with me forever, and uh, uh, I just I, I feel like uh, I really improved, uh, and uh, you know heading into this and they job that that experience in Australia really helped me. And uh, now I'm in Atlanta, continuing to get better. 
beyond the physicality, beyond the skills that you showed on the court, what about your mental toughness? Something that's obviously going to be a very, very big factor when you enter the NBA. I think mental toughness uh, comes from, uh, for me, I think it comes from preparation. I think if you are well prepared, uh, I think that will really help uh, you as a player to be confident. And uh, you know, if you if you if you're prepared, if you're well prepared, you're confident, and if you're confident, you're, you're gonna do good. So uh, that was my mindset in Australia. Ever since I played basketball, I just uh, just do my best to prepare. To do uh, to do everything to be uh, ready when uh, when the time comes. Well, Kenito, I just like to ask him about something that I've seen uh, him develop through time, which is actually on his physical body. He's got tattoos now. <laughs> can, can you show us your tattoo first? Uh, I think for me, my tattoos. I just got it from my dad because growing up, I saw my dad have tattoos on his oh. arms, and uh, I just thought, you know, as a kid, you know, when I grow up, uh, I wanted to have some. Yeah, when I went to Australia, I had uh, some free time, and uh, this Filipino uh, tattoo artist uh, that I trusted, and uh, they they helped me uh, get some, and uh, yeah, I'm very happy. <laughs> what, what did you get tattooed on yourself? Oh, uh, this one is the, the first one I got. The, it's Poseidon, because uh, you know my my name Kai is uh, in in other words is God is a sea or ocean. So I got Poseidon because he's the god of the sea. But uh, the others, I just like the design. Actually, my dad gave me the designs. I just stole it from him. It's a fallen angel, <laughs> and uh, this one's uh, Hades, and uh, it's much pretty cool. So I got him. <laughs> No, don't, don't tattoo a girl's name there. <laughs> no, <laughs> giving me, giving you advice right now. <laughs> bad luck. <laughs> We're talking about mental fortitude, preparation. Kai, how are you preparing for the workouts that are coming up? Um, are you watching tape now? Are you um, are you doing research? Tell us about your prep work in detail. Yeah, I was just going to say, you, you hit our plan right on the head. Um, so this week, we've been working on just Kai as a whole, right? This week, we're actually going to transition into what he's going to see at these team workouts specifically. And so we know his first workout. We know a conditioning drill that they do every time that every player is in there. We know the format of their workout. And so we're going to start getting into that a little bit this week with Kai. Don't want to overwhelm him. Don't want to put too much pressure on each little drill either. But just he will know what he's what he's walking into. So that's a part of this week. I'm so glad you you asked that question. Now back to Kai. Kai, the NBA playoffs this season are showing a high level of physicality. I mean, guys are being thrown on the floor. Balls are getting thrown on the bodies of players. Players are battling to make it to the top. How ready are you to cope with this physicality? in the NBA? I mean, there's a lot of uh, work that has to be done uh, for my, my physique, my body. I have to get stronger, as uh, it's pretty obvious when you look at me, I have to, I have to get stronger, uh, faster. Uh, but on the mental side, I think growing up in the streets of uh, Las Pinas in uh. the Philippines, growing up playing in the Philippines, physicality is normal. <laughs> right. I mean, for, for a kid, Playing against uh, you know construction workers, tricycle drivers, I think that that really helped me uh, be prepared mentally. Uh, you know, I me mean, playing. I mean, growing up, uh, my career in basketball, I always, I was always one of the youngest guys, and I, I was always playing with older players. So I think that really helped me on the mental side. That uh, you know that I'm pretty prepared and uh, I know what to expect, but. Uh, yeah, on the physical side, uh, uh, a lot to, to continue to work on, and uh, I mean, I'm not, I'm not stopping, so uh, I think I'll just mm -hmm. improve for, uh, over time. Speaking of, just, uh, yeah. uh, speaking of physicality, because we're at it, um, you mentioned that you looked up to Kristaps Porzingis, but now that you've grown um, after playing in the NBL, do you picture yourself more, still more like a Porzingis or Nowit Nowitzki or more of an Embiid or Yanis? Uh, I mean, yeah, uh, right now I'm looking at, uh, I mean, 
few players, uh, Yanis and uh, Nikola Jokic. Oh. Uh, I think those two guys, if I try to learn from them and uh, get the combination of both, I think that will really help me as a player. And uh, just the aggressiveness of uh, Giannis and also the basketball IQ of Jokic, mm -hmm. how he plays the basketball, uh, how he plays basketball the right way. Uh, I think that that's that's the, that's the biggest uh, biggest uh, advantage. Okay, I have to ask this question: How will you encourage young Filipino basketball players dreaming to be in your shoes, dreaming that someday? they will follow in your footsteps? Uh, I mean, uh, I would say it all starts from, uh, from a dream, from a goal, mm -hmm. setting, a, setting a goal. Uh, uh, I mean, in the Philippines, there's a saying, Libre lang mga it's free to dream. So when, uh, when I heard about that, I, I jumped big. Uh, my dad played in the PBA. I said, uh, I, I, want, I want to play in the NBA. And, uh, I think my advice to them is, uh, what I have to say to them is, uh, I started at the same, uh, same spot. I was, uh, you know, playing in the streets when I was young, and uh, started pretty young. And uh, just have to say, just uh, keep on uh, working hard and just enjoy the process. And uh, one thing that's very important that I always tell myself is to not uh, be afraid to fail. Uh, I think uh, sometimes in my career, I, I. I uh, I'm a little uh, worried, I'm a little afraid to fail and uh, that leads me to not trying. So I think the biggest advice is to keep on trying. It's okay to fail, it's part of the journey. But uh, just, just the fact that uh, you tried and you did your best, that will, uh, that will help you uh, get better as a person inside. I know there are a lot of decisions to be made before June 13. Um, is it more important for you to get picked in the draft or that you get to go to a team that you feel can really develop you and stay long term with? Uh, I mean, uh, for me, uh, I'm just more focused on today and the next day. Uh, I haven't really thought of uh, the draft yet. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm just uh, still focused on, you know, what's uh, what's to come tomorrow and, uh, you know, just giving all, giving my best today to improve and develop. And I think uh, I believe in God, and I believe that if I just uh, believe in myself and I mm -hmm. uh, put the work in, I, I believe that He will put me in the right place and uh, right place and at the right time. So it's just uh, it's just faith, and uh, just for me, I just have to keep my focus and uh, keep on working. But if you had the choice, which teams would you pick to go to? <laughs> uh, if I had the choice, I mean teams. Uh, I really can't. I really can't tell because uh, it really I haven't been to an NBA team before, so I don't know what's the environment like, how's the team like. But uh, I mean, in, I think for me, any team you put me in, I would uh, adjust and I would uh, do my best to, to fit well. So pretty because, safe, pretty uh, safe. <laughs> That's a good answer. That's a good answer. <laughs> does does this mean? I mean, like you're you're super focused on your goal right now and in getting into the NBA. Does that mean everything else outside of basketball is on hold? I mean, you're just 20 years old. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would say, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very focused, and uh, you know, when I talk about my family, uh, my family, everybody knows uh, what I'm about to do and what I'm doing and uh, everybody's also focused uh, that's, that that really helped me mm -hmm. uh, understand my goals more is because they, they're just there behind me to, to protect and to support me so that gives me more confidence just to keep on working uh, keep on improving keep on developing and uh, yeah keep on having my focus how, how do you make sure that you don't get burnt out in the process? Uh, I always, I always reflect uh, on myself. Uh, I mean, I would say every time before I sleep, I would reflect on what I did on uh, today's day. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very, I want to say I'm very religious, but I believe in God and I always pray before I sleep and uh, try to thank Him for all the blessings He gave me today and uh, to, to wish that tomorrow would be 
a better day. Well, Kai, th these questions, these last questions that I have for you are coming from our household here. And I'm being pestered by my children, my grandchildren to ask you these questions, not basketball related. Number one, what music do you listen to before you get on the court and get yourself pumped up? Um, and uh, yeah, if, uh, if you could ask that question, uh, answer that question. And number two, what lucky shoes do you wear before you get on the court? So music and lucky shoes. Kai, the floor is yours. Um, when it comes to music, I'm a big music guy. So I listen to different genres. Uh, I love, I love uh, r and I mean, uh, I love OPM, uh, pop music. But when you talk about pre-game, it's always hip hop and uh, hip hop and uh, you know Filipino hip hop and uh, those are the music and uh, favorite rapper, favorite Filipino musician. Favorite Filipino musician uh, uh, is a lot. <laughs> when it comes to hip hop, probably uh, probably Looney, uh, oh. Floji, um, Skastakli. Those guys, uh, those are my my favorites. And uh, when it comes to shoes, I don't really have lucky shoes. I don't really believe in those type of stuff. I mean, uh. whatever I feel like that's comfortable, uh, that's what I'm gonna wear because. Uh, I don't really have uh, special shoes. <laughs> okay, got it. Thank hey, you so can, much. Can I insert a question from my household? <laughs> <laughs> okay, what, 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 I mean, just for the future reference, what, what do you like in a girl? Oh, you asked me that question before. <laughs> Again, let's, let's, let's ask you, maybe it changed and evolved through time. Oh, it's, it's still the same. <laughs> It's still the same uh, when, when when the girl's respectful and when my girl respects my family and vice uh -huh. versa. That, that's what I like in the girl. Now just putting it out there, yeah. You know, just for the time <laughs> when you 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 have time already. <laughs> yeah. Kai, any message uh, for I guess for your fans, uh, for your for everybody who supports you, including Smart, uh, for all the people who are part of your team. Oh, I just wanna just wanna thank everybody first and foremost. Uh, I'm very thankful and uh, very blessed to have everybody's uh, support and help. And uh, I'm gonna do this without uh, every single one of you. And uh, just uh, keep on uh, praying and uh, keep on supporting because uh, I do my best uh, to to work hard every single day to to improve and to get to my dream. And uh, doing this all not for myself but for for all of us. I think it's amazing, Kinito. I mean, we uh, today we got a better picture, a clearer picture of um, how this journey is turning out for Kai. It's not just a solo effort. We see Patty, we see Joel, we see Jeremiah. He's got a strong team behind him, all believing in him. And it's amazing um, how, how much support he has uh, from his inner circle. But rest assured, Kai, you got all of us with you. We're part of that team. Uh, and in Tagalog, kasama mo kaming lahat sa mga ng Pilipino sa iyong mga pangarap. Kaya naman, uh, keep on going, keep on going for that dream, and and keep on inspiring all of us. Uh, just like we love to say it, puso Pilipinas. <laughs>